I would say take it step by step, start day by day. My life did not change drastically because as things changed, I changed with it. I don't believe that this part of the life should be mourning, but even mourning is a process in, in life that really is joyous if you can go through it. Those joys are what holds us together. We laugh so much. My name is Enid Mojica McGinnis. I am a wife, a mother, and a caregiver to my mom. One day, she turned on the stove and tried to make her breakfast, left a towel on the stove, and went outside, waited for the bus with my sister. And I see this towel, like, burning. I said, at this point, we needed to take out the stove knobs. Coffee. Good morning. I'm going to try to go take a shower. Hopefully nothing will happen. Hopefully the house won't be on fire while I can get ready to work. She's up again. Betty a dormir, por favor. Betty a dormir. Here she comes. We're just going to keep her busy. We knew something was changing. She said that she would not move out of the house, that she needs her own house. I didn't have anything planned out. You don't plan this. It just evolves. She took care of so many people. Nobody ever thought she was going to need taken care of. Radically accepting my mom was not easy with her illness, but it came natural to us. We come from a Puerto Rican family, and all Puerto Ricans take care of their grandmothers, their parents. So that was not a question. My mom was born in Ponce, and she moved to Brooklyn, then the Bronx, and then she moved to Buffalo. There were very few Hispanics back then, but it grew to such a huge Hispanic community. We lived most of our lives in the west side of Buffalo. And we knew everyone, we still know everyone. Even today, it is a very tight community. is incredible, the relationships that she has there. They walked into the house to have a cup of coffee. They sat in the porch with her and just talked with her. When my mom's dementia got worse, I knew that we had to take her out of her community to North Tonawanda where she knows no one. And we're in the middle of nowhere. I knew that a lot would probably fall on me because I'm the only one in Buffalo at this point. This circulates her, um, her blood because since she's not outside moving around in the winter, I have her circulating and it helps with osteoporosis with the bones. I find it an honor an honor to do it. How many people get to take care of their mother at this point in their life, are strong enough to do it, and watch them go into that next transition? <laughs> she know la plena. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Todos no, la this, plena, mami. this one, she know la plena. That one, she knows, that one. <laughs> <She> knows. <laughs> All right, so go ahead, describe me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Scattered. <laughs> scattered, girl. Yeah, <laughs> here, there, there. Like, that always happens. <laughs> Look where you're going this time. Yeah. My mom is always caring. Just <laughs> having an open door for everyone. That's just really it. <laughs> My mom was always witty. 
She was a fun, witty person. When it came to the things of God, she was very serious. My mom was pastor of Bethel Christian Church. And she was always in the kitchen serving folks for church. I never cooked. And every Saturday night after she goes to bed, I go shopping and I will stay up all night and cook for them. So I go to bed like about three, four o'clock in the morning to wake up at six and get her ready. It's go, 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 go. I do everything I have to do before I wake her up so that when I wake her up, she's ready and all I have to do is get changed. Today I'm running a little behind schedule because my mother decided to get up. Now I understand what my son means about me being scattered. Where is he? I look like a chicken without a head. I'm going to work. I am a little late. Let's do this. Do this. No, do this. Breakfast going. I have it all together. I love my mom and I love what I'm doing for her. I'm honored to do it. But there's just sometimes I feel like I'm the only one. Of course, it would be a lot easier if I had my sisters here, but I know that's not possible. But when I think I can't do it, then she does something funny and it just changes everything. What helps me with my uh, difficult times are my quiet moments. I don't have very much time to myself. The only time that I have is from four to 6 a.m. And that is my quiet time in what I call the throne room. And it's really my bathroom. And I love it there. I could be here all day if they let me. In the morning, I'll just sit here and just wait. My husband wanted to use the bathroom and he said, I don't even feel like going in there anymore. <laughs> um, coming in here and sitting for two hours, sometimes it's just not enough. I find myself like towards the end of the two hours anxious. Do I feel overwhelmed? At times I do. I especially feel overwhelmed when I'm getting ready to go to work. I'm always rushing out of here. And then I get my coffee and I say, who cares? I felt overwhelmed when I had to take over my mom's role as pastor of the church. Because the church is simply her life. Without it, she would have just died. I had no other choice. I was a pastor before, but she didn't look at me as a pastor, first of all. But it was hard. It's been hard. If there's a mic on the pulpit, she's sure to get it and start service. So we hide the mics from her. <laughs> <laughs> but I ended up loving, loving pastoring that church. I've been a teacher for 33 years at St. Mary's School for the Deaf. And I'm here. Where's Mike John? <laughs> I see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> There's three no. stories in this book. You're right. Okay, hold on. Uh, Why don't you just sign it? You don't have to say it. You can just sign it. I just want to see how you're doing. Okay? Yeah. How about, how do you say, I lost the keys? I lost. Yeah. Okay. I lost. Yeah, I lost. lost. I lost my keys. I lost my key. Good. It doesn't. It doesn't. Mother, mom, dad. mom and dad. Good. All right, let's see. I, I'm just, okay, let's do this way. Okay. At night, when the light got out, I am scared. 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 Yeah. Right. Why? Why? I hear something. Good, yes. Okay. Oh my God. The doctor said um, she has late stage dementia. 
Before I did anything else, I went to see a, a lawyer so that she can you know, give me the power of attorney. And she says, you're going to have to start getting some paperwork. And that's when it's like, oh, my parents have been so private about their paperwork. Like, I don't even know where to start. That's when I realized that I had to do a lot of digging and a lot of cleaning. I mean, I had to search high and low for documents, anything from her banking to her car, her house, even documents for her tomb, documents of her will, documents of her power of attorney. She would not give them up. I think I'm relieved to see a note from me. I just said, Mom, te quiero mucho. I've prepared for my mom's death because I've already gone through it with my dad. Death is a happy occasion for them. They believe in life after death, so they have a plan for that. And the way they are, they had their burial ground in Puerto Rico. And sure enough, we had a picnic. And she's like, I want to know who my neighbors are. And I'm like, you're going to be dead, Ma. Why would you want to see the neighbors? And she goes, because I'm living with them for life. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> she enjoyed, Mom enjoyed herself. Every time we go to Puerto Rico, she enjoys herself. If it wasn't for my son, I would have lost it because she started telling people that I was stealing her money and stealing her stuff. And I said, can you take it for just a couple hours just so that I could relax? That was a hard time. I mean, thank God, that's no, when we realized. Fun, no. It was fun. It was fun. It was fun for you. It was fun for you because you were in control and we weren't. <laughs> yeah. I... I've been in a funk all day. The home attendant went to Puerto Rico, which meant that obviously, you know, I had no home attendant, so I stayed with her. It has been a hard few days. Friday morning, we were supposed to go to a funeral, and I could not get her ready, which means I could never put her in a day hab for an adult. When you don't want her to get up, she gets up. When you want her to get up and get ready, she doesn't. So I did not go. It was really sad because I wanted to be there and comfort others, but I just couldn't do it. Going to a nursing home is not on the table. I, I promised her that's not a question, that's not an option for us. There is a fear that it, it could get so bad that I won't be able to take care of my mom. That doesn't mean that my son has to do that. Here, they just don't. I mean, I have people who still tell me today, when are you putting your mom in a nursing home? And I'm like, I'm, I'm not. Like, why are you even asking that? Like, and they're like, why are you doing that? Like, poor thing. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, let's remember this is an honor. Entonces, no me acostumbro estar sola allá en casa en estos días. Me vengo para aquí. Me acuesto por ahí. Jenny, déjame cama por ahí, el sofá. Pero qué bueno a vivir con tu hija, ¿no? No, mi casa está sola ya en Buffalo. No me quedo en casa porque me encuentro sola, muy solitaria, y me vengo para acá. Es en mi amable casa. No, doy, digo, no digo adorada porque adora, adorarse, adorar es a Dios solamente. Mi amable. No me vota, ¿verdad? No, yo no te voto. O me votas ahora mismo que están ellos aquí al frente de testigo. 
<laughs> Yo no te voto. Okay. This is my mom's room. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am so blessed with having her at home. I hated having to come in here and tuck her in at night and just leaving. I, I hated to I had to do that. I felt like I was tucking in a little child and then leaving them. Life was in the kitchen. We, you know, my mom would put out the record player right here and we would dance here. Or we would just enjoy ourselves. We had all our talks, all our arguments, all our, you know, all our laughs. We had them here. The first time I came to do it by myself and I thought I could start cleaning it and then I just burst it out crying and I just left hyperventilating. I just can't believe that life, like you collect so much and you know, you treasure so many things and it ends to nothing. I started and it was just hard to stop. I had to start, I cleaned out the refrigerator. When I start seeing all the roaches and I it just got disgusting and I just like started throwing everything out and, and it's because I thought, oh my God, like this is really happening. I don't want to miss this time because it's all a part of it. So I, I don't want somebody to come in and clean it. You know what I mean? It's like, no, so we got to do this because it's a part of the grieving process. It's a part of it that, that's so important. And it just brings memories, whether it brings tears or it brings joy, it's still memories. It's not the most perfect situation, but dementia is not who she is. And death is a part of life. 